Dozens of fast food restaurants hit by armed thieves. Police say they strike randomly and tonight they are still on the loose. And the Reno man accused of murdering his wife and shooting a judge will be heading to Las Vegas to find impartial jurors. And a child porn sting nets dozens. They are horrific, horrific. The disturbing videos they were trading in and why police are so concerned about some websites they frequent. This is breaking news from Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Several families are being kept out of their homes at this hour as police try to talk a troubled man out of his apartment. It's happening near Gowan and Tanea at the Camden Bel Air. This is a live look at the scene. Police were first called for a report of a suicidal man holding a woman in his apartment, but she has since been allowed out. Police emptied the surrounding apartments while they try to get the man to surrender peacefully. No word on how long this will last, but the evacuated residents have already been out of their homes for more than an hour. Two men armed with guns have been on a crime spree for the past three months. Their targets, dozens of fast food restaurants. Police say no part of the valley is safe from the apparently random attacks. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Melissa Duran joins us from Fort Apache and Tropicana with the story. Melissa. Well, that's right, Paula. This Roberto's taco shop was hit by armed robbers about one month ago. Now it's only one of about 30 fast food robberies that have taken place throughout the valley in the last few months. But now the owner has had enough and wants the suspects caught before things turn violent. Work was never supposed to be filled with worry, but for these Roberto's Taco Shop employees, it now is. They're worried any minute a man with a gun is going to walk through this front door demanding money again. You know, every once in a while you get robbed. I mean, that's expected, but um, not, not, not like what's been going on the last two, three months, no. In the last three months, owner Reynaldo Robledo says 10 of his taco shops have been robbed, some more than once. These guys, they've just been coming in. Um, just come up straight up to the cashier with the guns already out, you know, just pointing at them. And of course the cashiers get scared and they just take the money. It, it, it just happens so quick, um, less than a minute, less than half a minute. Here's surveillance video of the suspects, Hispanic men with baseball caps using intimidation to get what they want. Police believe these guys are responsible for more than 30 fast food robberies throughout the valley. Their main target, taco shops and other Mexican restaurants. I don't know why us. I mean, they come in, they've come in at 2, two in the morning, 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning, 7 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, 4 in the afternoon. They come in at any time, any day. Interesting thing about it, in most of the robberies, they're getting under $100. But although the payout for the suspect hasn't been big, the fallout on employees has been hard. So some of our employees that work in the graveyard shift, you know, they've asked us to change them. They don't want to work in that graveyard no more. We have a couple of you know, guys, they did quit working for us after they got robbed. Robledo has had enough. He's offering a cash reward to find these guys and hopefully ease the worry for his employees. Now, the owner of this restaurant is offering a $2,500 reward to catch the suspects. Crime Stoppers is adding $1,000 to that. Now, the owner of this restaurant has taken some new safety precautions. He's going to go ahead and put glass windows around the counter to protect his employees and the register. Reporting live, Melissa Duran, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Melissa, thanks. Police are also looking for a man who is stealing electronics from Walmarts. Officers say he has hit the Westlake Mead store. The suspect is bold enough to masquerade as a store employee employee wearing an orange safety vest and then loading the large equipment onto a cart. Then he just rolls it out of the store without paying. He's been getting away in a silver full-size van. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Expect some cooler weather tomorrow after the winds of change roar through tonight. Ted Florendo is here to tell us whether the wind will keep you up tonight. Ted? Depends on how hard of a sleeper you are, I guess, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> but yeah, breezy right now. Tomorrow, even windier. Here's a look right now what we're seeing outside. A lot of neighborhoods still around 20 to even 15 miles per hour, especially to the south. Same goes outside of Las Vegas too. The gusts got up to 30 to 40, even higher for tomorrow. So let's update you on the weather advisories right now. Look at Southern Nevada covered in advisories at this hour where you see the lighter shades of green or blue there. Actually, that is a high wind warning and that is for the Sheep Range, the Spring Mountains and also for Red Rock. High wind watch for Southern Nevada for tomorrow. We have a dust advisory for tonight and for tomorrow too as gusts get up to 50 miles per hour. We'll tell you all about that coming up in just a few minutes in neighborhood weather, Paula. 
The trial of a Reno businessman accused of murdering his wife and shooting a family court judge is being moved to the Valley to have a larger pool of available jurors. The I-team has been closely following this case. Darren Mack is accused of stabbing to death his wife, Charla Mack, and shooting and injuring the judge in their child custody hearing. After three days of trying to find an impartial jury in Washoe County, the judge up there decided to move the trial here. The issue is not whether they have been exposed to media coverage concerning the issue. Uh, the, the question is, can they set it aside and base their decision on the evidence that is presented within the four corners of the courtroom? And it won't be cheap for Washoe County to move the trial down here. 50 to 80 witnesses will be paid to travel to Las Vegas, put up in hotel rooms, and given money for meals. Jury selection here is expected to begin October 15th. North Las Vegas police are looking for a woman that they believe killed a man nearly a year ago. Cindy Fuentes is wanted for a murder at the Vegas Verdes Motel last December 4th. Police say she may be moving from place to place and may even be homeless. They ask anyone with information on her whereabouts to call Crime Stoppers. Tips are pouring into police as they search for suspected child rapist Chester Stiles. But even with all the publicity, he has managed so far to stay on the run. Stiles is accused of sexually assaulting a girl, not even three years old and taping it and he's also wanted for lewdness with a six-year-old girl anyone with information on styles is asked to call police investigators worked for months to bring down a child porn ring operation silent shield netted more than three dozen arrests in new jersey the sexual predators were using popular networking websites for kids and as john Kleekamp reports they came from all levels of society the suspects include a retail associate, a construction worker, and a trade show coordinator who describes himself as an actor on his MySpace profile. More than 40 people in all, ranging in age from 14 to 71, including one woman. Attorney General Ann Milgram says the suspects were possessing or distributing videos of child rape involving kids as young as four. I will tell you that it is impossible to sleep at night when you view them. Um, they are horrific, horrific videos. In fact, investigators say 42-year-old Anthony Peccio of Dumont was actually downloading kitty porn at the time of his arrest. The multi-agency effort began in August and is not over yet. Investigators saying they know of many other child porn users who will soon be in custody. And I can tell you, we're coming for you. We're coming for you tomorrow. We're coming for you next week. We're coming for you next month. Equally disturbing, almost half those busted in Operation Silent Shield belong to social networking sites visited by children and teens. What we've seen from the case today is that we know that there are individuals who trade and distribute child pornography who have specific profiles on MySpace and Facebook. That concerns me deeply. No one answered the door at Peter Galeski's Avenel home. Police say the 51-year-old man volunteers as a high school girls volleyball ref Neighbors say they saw police raid the home last week. Well, I hope it's not true because I live right here, but I don't know if it's true or not, though. I hope it's not, though. New Jersey's top prosecutor issued a subpoena this week to Facebook.com to find out if convicted sex offenders from that state have profiles listed. A similar subpoena to MySpace turned up 268 accounts belonging to registered sex offenders. The Utah man who was charged with rape for having sex with his then 14-year-old wife is out on bond. 26-year-old Alan Steed was 19 when he married his underage cousin. He was charged with rape the day after polygamist leader Warren Jeffs was convicted of rape as an accomplice for arranging the marriage. Steed wept during today's court proceedings. He'll be back in court next month. Nevada is now worst in the nation for home foreclosures, and today Governor Jim Gibbons held a summit on the issue. He met only with leaders from the state's top lending institutions. He told Eyewitness News that borrowers are often, in his words, uneducated and don't know what they're getting into. He says now they're looking for someone to bail them out. Gibbons doesn't think that should be the government. It means that the industry who is responsible for this ought to be an industry bringing solutions to the table, and that's what I expect from this group. Governor Givens does plan on telling the mortgage companies to help educate borrowers in the future. A state assemblyman who's been looking into the foreclosure problem says it's a huge crisis for the community. Tonight on News 1 at 9, Assemblyman Marcus Conklin told our Jeff Gillen he had hoped for more leadership from the governor today. 
we need to begin to address right away the issue of the number of foreclosures specifically for first time home buyers or for foreclosures for people who live in their home. Not speculators, not folks who have purchased a second home, but those people who live in their home. That is going to have the most impact on the Nevada economy one way or the other if we don't address the issue. Conklin says more research needs to be done to figure out how we got into this crisis and how to better educate home buyers. Private security contractors working in war zones may lose their immunity from prosecution. The House of Representatives passed a bill that puts all contractors working in Iraq and Afghanistan under the jurisdiction of the American criminal justice system. This comes after Blackwater USA was involved in the shooting deaths of Iraqi civilians last month. Children go missing every day in the U.S., but some are on a mission to find them. You know, back to their families. It's just, uh, it's, it's terrible that it, it has to come to a point where you have to make these big uh, deals out of something. But uh, we're glad that, uh, that people are going to take notice of it. We'll introduce you to a group of business leaders on a race to recover America's missing children. Plus, more China recalls, and now parents are becoming afraid to spend money on any more toys. We'll look at the problem coming up. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 11 with Paula Francis and Dave Cavassier. The first local news in HD. Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 11 in high definition. Business leaders from all over the U.S. want to keep the memory of missing kids alive with a cross-country trip. They call it a race to recover America's missing children. Their cars are luxurious, but these men and women are taking a proactive approach to trying to find kids in need. At each stop they make, from Florida to California, they pass out flyers of the missing child featured on their car. One fireball run team says he's proud to be doing something instead of just giving money. So I thought, Jesus, just like another, another, you know, charity drive that really isn't going to pay for anything or go anywhere. But then what changed my mind was what it was about and the race to find these lost children. And that right there did it for me because I have two children of my own and anyone that's a parent uh, understands the uh, importance of making sure their children are always by their side or taken care of. The flyers are given at every gas station, restaurant and hotel on the stops. Henderson was the sixth stop on this tour. The U.S. Post Office wants to keep you from falling victim to a worldwide scam using fake checks. The Postal Service launched the campaign this week to educate Americans about these phony checks coming through the mail. This comes after a global counterfeit sting that targeted scammers in several countries. Postal inspectors seized half a million fake checks and arrested 77 people over the course of eight months with one goal to understand that, that uh, you get a check in the mail, it's too good to be true, it probably is, and to stay away from it. To read more information about how to stay safe from fake check scammers, go to lasvegasnow.com. One local middle school is taking a unique approach to stop bullies from hurting other kids. Students at K.O. Knudsen acted out parts in their sixth annual anti-bullying assembly today. Much of the program taught students the best ways to deal with bullies and to tell an adult about problems early on. The students can take away a troublemaker's power. You'd have to do something about it. You can't just stand by or go ha 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 ha. In order to help someone, you don't have to be in a group. You just have to feel confident in yourself. K.O. Knudsen's Dean of Students says the school has zero tolerance for bullies. Another massive recall involves Chinese-made toys. Now the total number of products is more than 500,000, mostly toys, being pulled from store shelves because of paint contaminated with lead. And as Terry Okita reports, the recalls are now becoming a financial burden for some stores. The recall list continues to grow. The Consumer Product Safety Commission announced these products are among 544,000 items made in China that are deemed unsafe. Coin-shaped Pirates of the Caribbean flashlights, soft textured baby Einstein blocks, 
the Totally Me Funky Room Decor Set sold by Toys R Us, and a variety of wooden toys imported and sold by KB Toys. They are all said to have surface paint containing dangerous levels of lead, which can be toxic if ingested by young children. You find out about all those recalls, and it's crazy. It's like, how do we keep our kids safe? At the toy department store in Pasadena, California, they're now identifying products made in America. The rash of recalls has been bad for business. Sales have dramatically decreased at both of my stores. Um, there has been less foot traffic and more concern about where the toys are made. Brisbois tries to educate parents who, he says, never had questions about lead paint before these recalls over the last several months. Since then, it is a topic of conversation with almost every customer that's a parent. It's not just about buying the most popular toys on the shelves these days. Now parents are starting to buy these lead test kits too. The CPSC has warned there will likely be more recalls in the near future, but as more products get tested, that will decrease. That's little comfort for store owners like Brisbois, who has his sights set on the all-important Christmas season. If he can't stock up, his little independent toy shop may be in jeopardy. Terry Okita, CBS News, Pasadena. For more information about the latest round of recalls, go to our website, lasvegasnow.com. The Bureau of Land Management wants to know what you think about removing hundreds of what they call excess wild horses from one of their ranges. They say there are currently about 1,100 horses on Nevada Wild Horse Range. That number exceeds capacity for the area, they say. The BLM says they want to gather up about 800 horses from the range. If you weren't at tonight's meeting, you can still submit your comments. We have a link on our website, lasvegasnow.com. Some drivers will have a less convoluted commute in the south part of the valley. The new Silverado Ranch Interchange on I-15 officially opened this morning. Places that were once hard to get to are now easily accessible. Officials hope the new interchange will reduce traffic on the interchanges at Blue Diamond and St. Rose Parkway. We've got a dust advisory in southern Nevada with these high winds. The dust can create symptoms even for people who don't have respiratory issues. Las Vegas asthma and allergy specialist Joel Katz says the fine dust particles in the air can trigger coughing, headache, and even fatigue. You could also get rhinitic symptoms. Rhinitic symptoms mean a stuffy runny nose, congestion, and then ocular symptoms, itchy, watery eyes. If you also suffer from allergies, those will be adding to your misery. Health officials advise that asthmatics take their inhaler with them wherever they go. And for the rest of us, it might be best to just avoid outdoor exercise. Well, you oh, could tell man. Melissa's live shot that yeah. it's windy out there. Yeah, and that's going to continue throughout most of the night, too, yeah. and pick up even more tomorrow by the afternoon hours, too. Yeah, so it's just going to be a hairy night tonight and tomorrow, <laughs> that is for sure. Here's our camera on top of... Uh, Actually, this is at uh, Rainbow West Club. This is courtesy of Mulaski Family Properties, our camera there. And you can see the winds just jolting this camera back and forth. And like we said, tonight our winds could be anywhere from 20 to 25 miles per hour. Lots of neighborhoods right now at 20 miles per hour. But our wind gusts earlier today got to 30 to 40 miles per hour. Look at Mount Vista and Russell at 40, even higher at Red Rock at 48. And I think tomorrow Red Rock will see some wind gusts up to 50, maybe even more by tomorrow. Look at our wind gusts for Boulder City, Mount Charleston, 47 to 30. 2 miles per hour. Our current temperatures outside, lots of neighborhoods. This is nice. Mid 70s at this hour. 76 for Washington, Nellis, 71 for Durango and Warm Springs, 74 for Boulder City and Prump. You got, uh, you're currently at 69 degrees at this hour. Here's our highs today, just shy of 90 degrees at Camino El Dorado, 86 Seven Hills. South of uh, Las Vegas, Laughlin, 97 degrees down river. Prim came in at 86. In fact, our official high at McCarran today got to uh, 89 degrees. 87s are normal, so we climbed up just a few degrees. 74 is what we bottomed out at overnight. A nice warm night uh, overnight for sure. That dust advisory again, probably going to be uh, up uh, to the moderate category again for tomorrow. I'm thinking because the dust is going to be kicked up and swirled up quite a bit because of these wind speeds that could be up to 30 to 40 miles per hour in some areas. Now the big culprit is this big swirling going on just off the uh, Pacific coast here. And you can see these little puffy clouds here. That's cool air within that. Now we're going to get that cool air, but this is also a very strong jet stream that's going to be sliding down. This is the trough. This is the low that's going to crawl on shore. And as it does, uh, ahead of it is where we see those winds coming from the southwest. And that's why it is very windy to breezy tomorrow. When it passes through, we get the winds to come in from the north and bring us the cool weather but we still got to deal with these winds tomorrow 
possibly Saturday too, and maybe even on Sunday. We'll start to relax just a little bit. How about we do a little fly through here? Traveling forecast, LA 71 degrees for tomorrow. The Bay Area looking at a few raindrops. 65 degrees is that low crawls on shore. Not too bad for the Pacific Northwest. 63 in the Emerald City. Boys, look at the snowflakes showing up actually on some of our radars here. Uh, 83 degrees at Denver for tomorrow, and then looks like 83 down in uh, Albuquerque as we move further here. Looks like 86 for Phoenix. So your forecast then for tonight night. Temperature 69 degrees, breezy at times, but tomorrow's where it gets windy. It'll get cooler. 78 degrees, we have that high wind watch in effect for tomorrow morning. That includes the afternoon hours too. 78 degrees to top things off for tomorrow. 74 degrees by 6 p.m. Notice the winds will be like that throughout most of the day. Here's a quick look at your seven-day forecast. We will cool down, though, to the upper 60s, and then overnight lows in the 50s. So we just got to deal with the wind. Yeah. We're done. At least it'll be cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ted. Sure. Chris Matthews is here, and uh, people at UNLV kind of nervous about this. About their big center, yeah, yeah. this big seven-foot guy. UNLV's prize recruit, Biaz Hamga, we're talking about, sitting on pins and needles, waiting to hear from the NCAA on his academic eligibility. You'll hear from the frustrated athlete. Plus, the Cubs, are they living another postseason nightmare? We'll roll through today's big moments on the diamond next, right here on Channel 8. Eyewitness Sports with Chris Matthews. Well, the desert heat is now on the Chicago Cubs. Game two against Arizona. Cubbies feeling a bit snake bit. Could this be another season of disappointment? Sure looks that way. Arizona rookie Chris Young hits a three-run home run. That was enough as the Diamondbacks win at 8-4. They go for the sweep Saturday in Chicago. Well, the Rockies are rolling. Thanks to one swing of the bat, bases loaded for Kaz Matsui. Stuns the Philly fans with a grand slam. He helps launch the Rockies to a 10-5 win over Philly and a 2-0 lead in their best of five series. Cleveland opening their series with uh, New York. One run game, CC Sabathi gets out of bases loaded jam. Indians circle the wagons. Victor Martinez hits his first postseason home run. That opens the floodgates. Cleveland breaks a club postseason record with four homers as they pound the Yankees 12-3. That certainly has Joe Torrey searching for answers. UNLV recruit Biaz Hamga waiting to hear from the NCAA. He's looking for academic clearance so he can play college basketball. He thought he was cleared, took classes at UNLV, got B's. Then suddenly the rug was pulled out with the NCAA saying his academic credits are short. UNLV appealed, and so now everything's on hold. As soon as I get, I mean, I heard from the NCAA clearinghouse, I will just, uh, if it's positive, then it's fine. But if it's negative, then I have to start thinking again and talk to my guardian who lives in Indiana, so. Hamga could qualify, play now, or be declared a partial qualifier, be eligible this January, or he could be declared a non-qualifier, and he's then free to leave. Las Vegas hockey fans may not be familiar with the Ferraro twins, but they'll soon be cheering for him. Former NHL veterans Peter and Chris have spent a lot of time in Las Vegas and decided, hey, why not skate here? What my brother and I want to do is just share our, uh, you know, experiences and in, 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 uh, our leadership in, into what we've accomplished up until this point. We also have family in town, and uh, you know, we just want to have a little stability at this time. Play, play together as well, and uh, uh, again, try to uh, uh, be as successful as we possibly can here. All right, the Las Vegas Wranglers home opener is October 21st. Flat track racing rolls into Las Vegas this week, and you think it's a safe sport, boy? Just think again. We're racing on dirt tracks that have holes, that are loose, that have rocks. And we're going over 100 miles an hour and throwing them sideways. All right, a dangerous sport, but safe to say tickets are available at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The PGA Pros are swinging in Texas this week in the fall series. Texas to San Antonio, that's Las Vegas. Robert Gomez, he's tied for second at five under. Former Rebel Chad Campbell on 18. Bird, he's at four under. Another former Rebel, Chris Riley's at four under. Everybody chasing. Jesper Parnovic, who shot a career best 61, he is leading at nine under par. Oh, yeah. Greg Maddox once said, chicks dig the long ball. Boy, if that's the case, you'll like Thunderball this weekend at the Las Vegas National Golf Club. 16 of the longest hitters in golf will compete. The 2002-2004 power drivers will be here to show us their stuff. It's the sound. It's <laughs> the, the <laughs> ping. <laughs> that's what we like. How come I don't get that sound? <laughs> yeah, me either. Thanks, Chris. We'll yeah. be right back. <laughs> That's our 11 o'clock report. Remember, we have a dust advisory and a high wind watch for tomorrow. You can catch updates and other news 24-7 at LasVegasNow.com. And we'll have the latest on the SWAT standoff still going on at this hour at Tanea and Gowan on Eyewitness News this morning. Dave Letterman's up next. He's got Nicolette Sheridan. Have a great Friday.